In this video, we're going deeper into compositing. Specifically, you're gonna learn how to light, how to shoot, as well as how to edit your way into this final impossible portrait. My name is Pi, and I'm one of the founders of Lynn and Jersa Photography and SLRLounge.com. We're teaming up with Adorama to bring you a new series of photography tutorials called Master Your Craft right here on Adorama TV. So let's dive in. What's up friends? My name is Pi. Welcome back to Adorama TV. It's wonderful being back here with y'all. Let's dive straight into this. I'm gonna break this video out into multiple pieces so that way it's easy for you guys to follow along. And let's start first with I would recommend going back and watching the simple compositing tutorial that we released not long ago here on Adorama TV just to get an idea of this overall technique because what we're going to do here is we're going to dive a bit deeper. This overall kind of image and technique, it actually comes from our advanced lighting courses where we're combining lighting with this simple composite technique to create images that would be impossible otherwise. So let's start with kind of the overall vision for this image and why I refer to it as the impossible shot. So this is a bridge in downtown Los Angeles and we're actually underneath the bridge and what is right below my frame, which you can see in the behind the scenes video is this street. Now the photograph that I want is I wanna shoot this angle with the lines of the bridge leading down and into my subject standing right here in this little kind of triangle shape or trapezoid or you know, that's why I'm a photographer, so I don't have to know what that shape is called. Uh, but I want them to be standing right here. The problem with this is that one, it would be very difficult to do. I mean, I don't even know what position, how far they would have to be from me and what kind of lens I would need to use to be able to get the right composition to get them standing in and actually be visible versus too small versus too big, blocking the scene, etc. So A, I know I want to composite because I don't have the time on this shoot to spend an hour trying to figure out exactly where they need to stand, what lens I need to use, and we might even find out that it's not possible at all. The second part of this is that that's a street. It's an actual open street. And I can't have my clients standing in a street that would be very dangerous, very irresponsible as a photographer. So it's just a safety issue. So I know that I need to go to a composite technique. So we have a vision for this. The next question is how? How do we light, how do we shoot the image to set us up for this? So let's go into that. We're gonna talk first about lighting to get to this portrait. So this image is using a technique that I refer to as the Hollywood two light. Now I called it that because when I started using this technique years ago, I stole it from Hollywood because this is how on sets, they often set up their lights in this way, where essentially the light sources are behind each subject. This left side light is actually lighting up her face. The right side light is lighting up his face, but they're kind of giving each other rim lights, right? So this left side light is also lighting up his back and giving him a rim. The right side one is lighting up her backside and his front. So it's this kind of cross directional light that you'll see in the behind the scenes. Now, usually on a Hollywood set, they would have plenty of fill lights and other practicals and everything that would light up the shadows on each side. But from a photography standpoint, from a stills perspective, we can get a really dynamic and interesting photograph by leaving everything else dark. So that's what I wanted to aim for. Now they're actually standing in front of uh, just chain link. So let me go ahead and do this. I'm gonna go to the uh, develop module. I'm gonna brighten the background so you can see exactly where we're at. And I'm sure you're already seeing it in the uh, behind the scenes itself. So why would I choose this background? Well, my whole thing is I know for this compositing technique that what I need is for my subjects to be basically photographed over black, okay? So I need everything around them to be black. I need only the piece of them that's, that's lit to be visible in the shot. And you're gonna see why when we get to Photoshop. And that's a really big piece of this is knowing which of these techniques is easy to do in post so that way when you're photographing, when you're shooting, you can actually fall back on these techniques and say, oh, I know this thing is gonna work. So what I'm gonna do is refer to the camp framework, right? I already know my composition. It's this background. That's the composition that I want, okay? 
what I need to do is set them into a pose that's gonna look good with that composition. And that's why I'm kind of imagining they're holding hands and I want them to be dropped right here into the bottom of this frame, looking at each other with all the lines leading down towards them. I need the background to go black though. This means that for ambient light exposure, I'm setting my exposure in camera to 1 200th f3.5 and ISO 100. This is dark enough that most of those chain link behind them is black basically. And if I press J to bring up my highlight and clipping alert, I can essentially knock it out by just pulling the shadows down a little bit. I'm gonna show you how to do this locally in just a moment though, so let's not worry about that. Then I'm gonna add the flashes in. Now you can use grids if you like. I believe I'm actually shooting this bare bulb um, and just using direct light on each of them. Uh, but we're essentially just adding enough light to make them the brightest point in the frame and to light them up appropriately. For a scene like this, with this you know, shutter speed and bare bulb, we're talking probably like one quarter to one eighth power on a typical flash. It's not a whole lot of power, okay? Then we get to this shot, and that's exactly what I need. Now I actually need to go and shoot the plate shot. So the plate is this image, which I believe I did shoot it after. Let me see here. Yeah, so that was at 10. That was a, a lot of time in between. I don't know, I think we were, we were teaching and filming the tutorial, so I didn't shoot the plate until well after. So I went to the middle of the crosswalk actually for the plate shot and I was obeying the law. I pressed the button. And when I got the light, I would go out in the middle of the street and with a 7200 lens, I could zoom in and get the perfect sort of lines dropping into my frame. I could take the shot. I think I did this a couple times just to get right on with my exposure and with the, the overall image and everything. And I landed at 1 200th of a second F4 and ISO 1600 for this image. Okay, so we've lit and shot the images. Now we're gonna go to the next step, which you should remember from simple compositing, which is our color grade in Lightroom. Now this go around, I'm gonna keep this really simple. I'm not even gonna use any presets whatsoever. All we're gonna do to this image is I'm gonna go ahead and just warm up the exposure a little bit because I do like, uh, sorry, warm up the temperature because I do like a slight bit of warmth on my subjects. Now pressing J, so I'm gonna brighten up just for them. So I'm kind of looking at them, I'm looking at their shadows like on their face, on their body, everything like that. I'm gonna brighten this on this side. And this is good, okay? I might even flatten out a little bit of the contrast. Now you'll notice, pressing J, all of my grates now in the background are completely visible. And that's gonna be a problem because what we're gonna do is go into Photoshop and when we use a screen blend mode, black disappears. So we need the background here to be black. So here's a simple trick. Grab an adjustment brush. I have here a preset that's set to uh, burn blackout, okay? This is in the Visual Flow Toolkit. If you don't have it, that's fine. Pause the video, just dial in these settings and save it out as your blackout brush. Now what you're gonna do with this brush is you're gonna paint right over the background. And all it's gonna do is black things out. And when you get close to say the body, what I'm gonna do down here is turn on auto mask. And it's gonna do a fairly good job of pinning that mask to just the areas that we actually need to black out. Okay. And then we're gonna do the same thing here. We get close to the body, we're just gonna feather over and it's okay if it kind of guesses wrong on a few of these spots. We're gonna go down into the face, into the front of the chest, and we're gonna refine that mask just a little bit in a second. I find this to be easier doing this from the Photoshop side, uh, sorry, from the Lightroom side than trying to do this from the Photoshop side. We have most everything that we need here. So all we're gonna do now is hold down Alter Option and I'm just gonna paint it off. This time I'm not using the auto mask function. I'm just painting it off loosely off any areas that are covered that I don't want to be. Okay. That looks good. Paint it off the suit, off the hands and make sure that nothing is covered on his face. Now, <clears throat> one of the things I like to do is I like to zoom in, just make sure that the blue is solid. Sometimes you end up with these areas, especially when you're using auto mask, where it kind of skips certain areas and it makes it look almost like noise in a, in a photograph once you do the blend. But now this is what we get. And the dots up here, like those lights, not a big deal. It's totally fine, just leave it the way it is. So let's go now to the background, to the plate. 
This is where I'm just going to make some subtle tweaks here. All I'm going to do to the plate is actually pull down. I don't know what I was thinking with that uh, temperature, but I'm going to pull down the temperature quite dramatically. We're going to, in fact, go down to like probably 3200-ish Kelvin, and I'm going to make some more adjustments to this later. But for now, let's leave this around 3000, and let's just get the kind of shadows and everything that we want in shot. Just some simple adjustments. Select both of these. Now we're going to go to that same part three, right? We're going to take these into Photoshop and this is where things are going to change a little bit. So we're going to go open as layers. Well, they're going to stay the same first, then they're going to change. Okay. So once those layers are open, let me go ahead and press F just to go full screen. Okay. I'm going to center up this little composition and now I don't need to do that whole align layers thing, right? Because this go around, uh, we have two completely different shots going on. But watch what happens when I actually flip this top layer now to screen. So all I'm going to do is flip this to screen. Anything that's black drops away from the shot. That's why I needed everything to be black around them. That's why we lit it the way that we did. That's why we left things in the shadows. Because now I can go press Control T or Command T to bring up my transform box. And I can simply pull them down and drop them right exactly where I want them in the frame. I, I can choose their exact size, their exact spacing, everything in the shot, okay? I'm gonna leave it right there. Now notice one thing, because the fronts of them, remember how we kind of left them in the shadows? So because of that, they're a little bit transparent, okay? So how do we fix that? There's, there's two things that we need to fix actually. One is the lights that are still in, one is the transparency. So watch this. Let's fix the light first. All I'm going to do is go and select my mask. And now we're just going to paint black right over those spots to remove the lights. Okay. So this is why like I'm not concerned about those lights at all or anything else around them because it's that easy to fix. But now you see there's that transparency going on where we can kind of see the lights behind them. So all you're going to do is add that black back in. To do that, just add a new layer. And over this layer, you're going to paint black literally where their bodies are. Okay. Now that has the same effect essentially as them just being like their bodies just falling into the shadows where we're painting it. Right. So it just makes it opaque and their bodies go back to that shadow. And it, the beautiful thing is I'm still using my mouse for this. Like you don't have to get crazy with this because when you pull off this technique, when you do it well, you don't have to be incredibly precise with your masking because you've already lit it and you've already shot it in a way that kind of helps you out a bit. Okay. So now they're in and we can kind of take a look at this mask. Um, if you just want to click the mask, you can see areas that kind of need to be hold down alter option, by the way, to click the mask and to see only the mask layer. And you can see any areas that you kind of need to refine a little bit. Okay. Press alter option again and click that eyeball again to go back to your view. And we're good. Like this looks fantastic. So if there's anything else that you want to tweak to this at this point, this is where I would merge everything to a new layer, alt control shift E or option command shift E and make any other adjustments that you want. So if there's anything you want to Photoshop out, that's fine. What I'm going to do now though, is save this. We're going to drop back into uh, Lightroom for a second and we're going to go back to that twice bake technique that I've talked about in other videos. So what that essentially means is after a basic edit in Photoshop, we're going to go and, and do a little bit more, uh, once we're back into Lightroom. So our image is added back. And this is how simple stuff like this is. So watch this, I'm going to add a radial filter right over them. Okay, now this is still set to that uh, blackout brush. So what I'm going to do instead, is I'm going to set this actually to just a negative 0.5 exposure brush. The important piece here, though, is I'm going to shift the color temperature. So what's now happening is everything that's kind of outside of this bubble goes to blue, right? And everything inside it kind of drops into this nice yellow. Now remember when I kept them a little bit warm because I did that, it sort of fits with the vibe of the scene. Like as it drops in, they're naturally a bit more warm than everything else around them. But if you want to kind of tweak and fine tune that, what I would do is I would extend the feather up. So it's a very subtle graduation. I would open this out a little bit and then I'm going to tone this back a tiny bit. And what we're going to do is if you want to paint off of them, that's totally fine, but I really don't see it that noticeable. What we're going to do instead is just add a bit more blue. 
Okay, one way to do this is actually through the dehaze, but in this image, it's probably a little bit too dark to utilize dehaze well. But dehaze does a great job of really amplifying blue tones. So instead, you can just go into blues, you can pump them up a little bit, and then we can actually go back up to saturation as well and kind of add a little bit more vibrance and saturation to the overall image. And that's really it. That's how I created what I refer to as the impossible shot. Now, the final image that's actually in our portfolio is this shot. The only difference was I just exaggerated the blue. So on this layer, I just pulled it down more and that's it. They never actually stood in the street. So I hope you all enjoyed this tutorial and the techniques that you learned within. What I would say, if you guys are out on a photo shoot or if you have friends that shoot, send them these videos so that they can learn how to take shots like this without ever putting anybody in danger. If you all enjoyed the video, I'd love for you to subscribe to the channel, turn on notifications so I can see you guys back here same time, same place next week. And in the meantime, you guys can follow me at Pygersa on Instagram as well as Born Uncreative on TikTok. All right, peace.